So in this video, I'm going to share with you how I was able to close over $1 million worth of deals over a few short years in my regular sales jobs as well. So be sure to check it out. I used to work as a BDM, uh, which is a business development manager uh, for a large company that I'm pretty sure you will know. Uh, I won't announce it due to uh, you know, confidentiality reasons, but um, this job was the first job that I ever worked for that um, enabled me to go out there and, and sell. So I was responsible for managing a team, a uh, team of developers, and I was also responsible for uh, meeting with the client and also to talk to them and also to try and get them to you know, buy some of our software um, services that we had. And each of the transactions that um, that I sold was worth about $30,000 to about 100K, maybe about 300K, depending on the project. And uh, when I went into this job, I didn't really know what I was doing. You know, I was just really, uh, you know, I was just winging it, to be honest. You know, I was just being nice to them. I was dressed very nice as well. I looked pretty good. Just being, you know, just, just mucking around there. But uh, but yeah, you know, that I didn't have any training whatsoever. But, the, but my boss thought that I had potential to meet with clients to talk to them and also to close deals as well so I didn't know what I was doing um, so it didn't really work out that well for the first for the first few months it was really tough it was really stressful I was just overwhelmed with so much work and it was just really hard for me just to push forward I wanted to give up so many times but but what I did was I just read lots of books and I started going on YouTube just reading about how to you know how to sell and um, obviously I was reading through Grant Cardone stuff I was reading through um, you know closing techniques how to manage objections rejections or oh, there's a lot of stuff on sales and um, basically what happened was when I started reading all those things I, I really what really triggered me was my whole perspective changed because when I looked at someone were to tell me um, you know we're not interested at the moment or some um, a client would say that uh, you know we're too busy or we don't have the budget I used to just say okay no worries and I'll go back to my boss and say they don't have the budget and that would be it but I never looked at it as like that's just an objection so an objection is when the the, the customer gives you a um, reason not to buy right excuse me a bit of a bit of a truck going past there you know? But uh, yeah, that, so, so I learned what an objection was. So an objection is simply a reason why the customer won't buy. And there's a whole bunch of different techniques that teaches you how to manage the, these objections. So I was reading through books and it said that um, if they don't have the budget, then you can say this. Or uh, if they're hard to get to, you can always follow up. So that's what I did. So I started applying these techniques. And then, um, so, so what really happened, what really changed everything was that, I remember there was one, customer this one client and um, they've been sitting on the fence with our SERP that with our product and service um, and they didn't really want to purchase as of yet they were just too busy but it was worth about uh, how much was it worth? it was about thirty thousand dollars for this particular project it was a lot of money and um, but no one really got to this person because it was just really tough to get through and I, I remember once I went up to them and said, oh, you know, have you looked at the pro? Have you looked at the contract? What do you think? And they said, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at it later on. And that would be it. But then I read, started reading about follow-up, the importance of follow-up. And then I realized that I wasn't following up. I just tried them once and that was it. So then the thing, what I learned with follow-up is that you have to keep on following up. You've got to keep on talking to them, sending emails. And you might seem like a pest, but really you're not. You're just reminding them. And I reframed my thought that this person isn't considering me a pest. This person is just busy. Like I'm busy. Everyone's busy. And if someone just sends you a text and says, oh, by the way, did, did you manage to check out this thing? Then you'll be like, oh, yeah, thank you very much for reminding me. And then you go ahead and check it out. So this is, that's how I looked at it. So then after about seven follow-ups, I never forget, I went to her office and said, have you had a look at it? This is the seventh time I went to her office. And she said, fine, I've had enough, that's it. I'm just gonna, give me the papers, I'm gonna sign it. And that was it, I was standing there, just looking at it and um, I never forget it. She just signed the papers and just gave it back to me and that was it, $30,000, you know. Um, and that was when it really hit me that sales is a really powerful skill if you know how to master it and if you know how to if you know what you're doing then you can make lots and lots of money so for example prior to the sales I was working in IT and as a software developer um, I was making I don't know about 50 or 60k or 70k per year and I could probably set aside probably about a couple hundred bucks per month 
and I could probably save maybe about ten thousand dollars a year from a sell, from from a software engineering job. So for me to come up with thirty thousand dollars in savings, it will take me about three years of savings. No joke. But that day, that moment when I closed that thirty thousand dollar deal, um, just by just talking to them, it was only done in about ten minutes. It took me ten minutes to get that thirty thousand dollars, and that's when it really that's when it really honed down on me that if you can look at sales as just simply a skill if you master this skill there is no ceiling on your income because if you work in a job let's say you're a software engineer um, you're just going to be just making maximum of maybe even six figures and that's pretty much it you can never go past that six figure mark doesn't matter if you write the best code doesn't matter if you uh, you know write make the best product whatever it is you'll always be paid that one amount but when you switch over to sales, you get paid based on your performance. So if you know what you're doing, if you know how to sell, there is no ceiling on your income. Your boss is not gonna tell you, hey, you should stop selling, stop making me money, stop, you know? That's never gonna happen. And if you position yourself in a commission sales type of role where you make earning commissions or you're, um, you're tied to your performance, where if you work really hard, you make money, and that's based on your performance, then there is no ceiling on your income. So that's what really, triggered me the importance of sales. So over the years since then, um, that's, that changed my life, that transaction there. And after that, I made just under about half a million in about nine months in that particular company. But um, but then I left that company because there was a lot of issues with that company and then eventually um, I decided to leave. And then, you know, I was trying to get money again, so then I was playing for jobs again. And then I started using the sales techniques in, um, that that I learned. So I was going out there, I was meeting with recruitments, I was meeting with CEOs, and I was just meeting, 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 and I got another job. And then over the years, um, uh, the transactions that I closed for all those jobs and everything, they're all about, you know, there was a um, project, the internet that we sold for about 100K, 200K, and it just really depends on the product and the service. But out of all that time, I had a look at all the um, transactions I made. I've made over about 1.5 million or something in in the past couple years and obviously I don't own that million. I wish I did own that million it was for the company but but the commissions like the small commissions in those transactions that's pretty big and that's what I learned is that sales is really just it's a game of chess you have to really learn how to master this game of chess so that being said um, oh in this video I just want to show you I want to share with you just three tips on how you can close more deals and also to also increase your revenue as well. So um, step number one, this is what I've learned is that you gotta find lead sources. You gotta find lead sources. So what's a lead source? So uh, basically you need to generate leads, obviously. So you need leads coming from a particular source. So um, where do you get these leads? Where do you get these prospects? Where do you get these interested people to go into your company or to purchase your, your company? You need to go to, you need to find where these leads are and, in, and particularly, you need to find where these sources are. So for example, um, uh, during the COVID 2020 COVID situation, uh, everyone lost their jobs and stuff. So I was at zero again, and I had to find leads, I had to find um, income. So what I did was I went online and looked up uh, different ways in which um, people were looking for IT skills. And um, so basically I was looking at all these websites, I was looking at these recruitment websites, looking for people who are looking for IT skills. And I found, I managed to find um, uh, airtasker.com. Uh, that's a place where people post jobs and people are looking for people to work on their jobs. So it's like this online platform where people are looking for um, a way to, you know, pay someone to do a particular job. It could be from programming to be fixing your computer, whatever it is, right? So that was a lead source. And when I found these lead sources, um, I was able to post a little ad that was free saying, hey, I offer this, ex this service, uh, please give me a call. That was my advertisement. And, um, and when I had, at the end, I had about 10 lead sources and each of those lead sources, they only generate a bit of leads, but there was one or two that made a lot of, that generated a lot of results. And I just stuck with those, those two uh, lead sources. And as a result, I was able to increase my income straight away. So step one, number one is you need to find, um, you need to do your research and f think about where are your potential customers? Where are your potential um, prospects gonna, going to be coming from? Can you advertise on Facebook? Can you go on classified ads? That's really up to you, but you'll find that you, you'll find that if you do a bit of research, you'll be able to find these prospects. And the first one to second one won't 
really matter because no one's going to contact you on the first or second hit but eventually you will f you will strike gold and you will find an area where you'll be able to extract a lot of prospects from that particular source so so that's step number one is you got to find the right lead sources and try and generate leads it's like you're going to um you know uh, go mine for oil or whatever it is you're, you're trying to pump out oil for, from the ground you want to find certain areas or you're going to go fishing you want to go find certain areas of the ocean where you're going to fish that particular type of fish so um so that's step one, number one is to find the right lead sources so step number two is you want to build your pipeline so um so nothing let's say that you're a really good salesperson uh, you know how to close deals but you only have one lead then you're only going to get one customer but if you have maybe a thousand leads, if you have a thousand prospects, then you're going to be generating a lot more income. So, so really, the person who has the biggest pipeline or the biggest amount of leads or prospects going into their into their business is the one who's going to win. Um, but the one who has very little, you have nothing in your pipeline, um, then you're not going to be making that much income because there's not much to work with. And plus, you know, you're going to get rejected a lot as well. So those leads are probably going to get wasted anyway. So the next step is you need to build your pipeline. So once again, go to your lead sources, try and build a pipeline, a steady pipeline of interested people coming into your business every day. So if you're only getting one interested person of, of your services, make it two, make it three, make it four. And you want to increase this. You want to keep going hard and, um, and just try and get about 10, 20, 30 per day. And that's pretty much it, you know. You want to build a pipeline because the bigger the pipeline, the more income you have. So build a pipeline. And uh, number three, step number three is you really want to get in front of as many people as possible. So um, I found that it was it's very amazing how something magical happens when you sit in front of a person and you talk to them. I don't know what it is, but when you sit in, like face to face with a person, um, something magical happens and they simply, um, you know, I don't know, you can see the expressions, you build trust and everything, but when it's on the camera, it's a bit trickier. When it's on the phone, it's a bit trickier as well. But something happens when you're meeting face to face, there's that trust, there's that bond. So I find that the more people that you sit in front of, the higher chances of you closing a deal. So, so I would highly recommend to try and meet as many people as possible per day, even if it's about 20 minutes per day. Um, if you can get in front of at least four people per day, I guarantee you will increase sales. But if you were to send someone an email, they'll just easily flick you off or send someone a text, they'll just ignore you. So you wanna change it so you can in get in front of people as much as possible. Okay, so try and get face-to-face, -face, more face-to-face -face meetings, and you will be able to increase your, your revenue there. So, um, so as a conclusion, I hope you like this video. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I'm on YouTube as UB Relentless, or you can check out my website at UBRelentless.com. I've got lots of amazing um, articles and content to share with you as well. Uh, please email me at choir at UBRelentless.com or subscribe to my channel. So I've got lots of great content and, um, and I've got lots more value that I'm going to be delivering for you soon. So hope you like this video and I'll see you guys later. Thanks.